We will now look at the problem of a particle in a box. A quantum particle is confined to a one-dimensional box of length L. This is a square well with infinite energy barrier. So you can see that the potential energy is infinite outside the box and between 0 and L the potential energy is 0. Okay, so we can uh, summarize this condition as the potential energy between 0 and L is 0 and for x greater or equal to L and x less or equal to 0 the potential energy is infinite. So if we write Schrodinger's equation inside the box minus h bar squared divided by 2m second derivative of the wave function d squared psi dx squared with respect to x plus the potential energy times psi since inside the box the potential energy is 0 0 times psi will be equal to energy times psi so this gives us the following Schrodinger's equation for this case d squared psi dx squared is equal to uh, so if I take this 2m to the right hand side 2m over h bar squared with a minus sign so minus 2m energy divided by h bar squared times psi and I'm going to call this quantity uh, the prefactor as k squared so this is minus k squared times psi where k is square root of 2me 2me square root divided by h bar so what I have obtained here is the Schrodinger equation for particle inside a box with infinite energy barrier, the time independent Schrodinger's equation. Now, in order to solve this differential equation, we, we have to write its characteristic e equation. So the derivative d squared uh, is replaced with m. So we have m squared and then we have uh, plus k squared times psi equals to zero. So uh, m squared, the second derivative, because it's the second derivative, and then we have k squared, m squared plus k squared equals to zero. This is the characteristic equation, and that is basically obtained from uh, d squared dx squared applied to psi plus k squared this whole thing is applied to psi is equal to zero so this is replaced with m squared this is k squared okay so this has a characteristic equation has a solution m is equal to plus or minus i k where i is square root of minus one so the solutions are of the form psi of x is a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x or we can say it's a sum of sines and cosines so we have a sine k x plus b cosine k x so this is basically telling us it is uh, some constant uh, a prime let's say times e to the i k x plus b prime e to the minus i k x but i can write this as a sum of sines and cosines due to euler's formula this is cosine k x plus i sine k x this is cosine k x minus i sine k x so that basically boils down to this um, it's a sum of sines and cosines uh, so therefore the solution has uh, this form okay uh, the
the probability of finding the particle inside the walls must be zero because the energy cost of penetrating the walls is uh, too high the potential energy is infinite so the the particles should not should not be inside the walls that means the probability should vanish at the boundaries so psi at zero should be equal to a sine zero plus b cosine zero which is uh, zero plus b and this should be equal to zero therefore i obtain b is equal to zero from this boundary condition that's my first boundary condition the wave function must vanish at zero so it gives me the result that the wave function is of this form psi of x is equal to a sine kx all right now then if i look at the second boundary condition because the wave function should also vanish at the other boundary psi of l is a sine kl and this should be equal to zero as well and a is non-zero if a is zero psi is zero that means the particle doesn't exist this tells me that k times l sine of what is zero sine of n pi is zero <clears throat> so that is basically k was square root 2 me over h bar square root 2 me over h bar times l must be equal to an integer n times pi this is the second boundary condition or, or the result of the second boundary condition let's um, pull this aside for the moment okay so uh, this is the second boundary condition now the corresponding energy levels we can find e sub n is basically uh, if you square this side you get n square pi square uh, divided by l squared h bar squared and divided by 2m so we will obtain for the energy levels n square pi square h bar square divided by 2m l squared now uh, we can substitute for h bar h over 2 pi and then we will obtain n square pi square h square h over 2 pi parenthesis square gives me 4 pi squared there is a 2 at the bottom so i obtain 8 pi squared ml squared and now these pi squares will cancel and i will find n square h square n square h square divided by 8 ml square so the energy levels are given by h square divided by 8 ml square parentheses n square now what are the possible values of n n can be 1 2 3 etc uh, it cannot be zero because if n is zero then you would obtain sine zero and the wave function would vanish the particle must exist therefore n should start from one not zero so our conclusion is that the energy must be quantized it should be discrete it should have these values depending on the quantum number n n equals to zero is identically zero that's not allowed because the wave function vanishes psi is equal to zero implies the particle doesn't exist okay and k values k is equal to the wave number 
2 pi over lambda that is equal to n pi over l and the corresponding wavelengths then will be 2l divided by n right because the pi's will cancel here we will find the wavelength is 2l divided by n the quantum number n okay now if i work on the normalization condition the particle must exist somewhere between 0 and l the complex conjugate of the wave function psi multiplied by psi dx probability density function integrated over all possible values should give me one that is a square integral from zero to l sine square kx dx this should be equal to one now what is uh, sine square i can replace sine square with the following a square integral from 0 to L, 1 minus cosine 2kx divided by 2dx. Why? Because cosine 2kx is cosine square kx minus sine square kx or uh, 1 minus uh, 2 sine square kx. Therefore, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, cosine 2kx is cosine square kx minus sine square kx. So we obtain uh, for 1, 1 minus sine square is equal to cosine. So this is also 1 minus sine square kx. I obtain cosine 2kx to be equal to 1 minus 2 sine square kx. So if you take sine square kx to the left side and cosine 2 kx to the right hand side, you will see that it's 1 minus cosine 2 kx over 2. Okay, so that integral 1 over 2 dx gives me 2. So uh, x, so a squared over 2, let's take this 1 over 2 to here. So 1 dx gives me x. And the integral of cosine 2kx is minus 1 over uh, 4k. It's going to be um, minus 1 over 2k sine 2kx in the 1 half parentheses. This will be evaluated between 0 and L. Okay, so let's take this upstairs for the moment. Okay, and uh, this is going to give me a squared L over 2. Why? Because sine 2KL will be equal to... Uh, if k, is, uh, k times l is n pi, sine 2n pi, that is 0, sine 0 is 0, so this part will give me 0. So there is no contribution from this part, only contribution comes from x, which is l. a square l over 2 should be equal to 1, which implies that a is square root 2 over l. Alright, so I obtain the final answer, square root 2 over L, sine kx, n pi x over L. The wavelengths are 2L over N. The corresponding uh, linear momentum, uh, P is equal to uh, H over lambda, remember, is N uh, H over 2L. That's the, from the de Broglie relationship. Corresponding energy levels are h square over 8 ml square n square n is 1, 2, 3, etc. And if I plot this solution for n is equal to 1, I have square root 2 over l sine pi x over l. That's the smallest possible energy uh, and that will have the 
that we will call the ground state. The corresponding energy is h squared over 8 ml squared, and the corresponding wavelength is 2L. That means we have half a wavelength inside this uh, box, so we have a node, anti-node, and node. For n equals 2, we have square root 2 over L sine 2 pi x over L. The corresponding energy since E scales with n square is four times the ground state energy. Now we have a wavelength of 2L divided by 2L. So we have a full wavelength here. So that means we have three nodes and two anti-nodes. <clears throat> and for n equals 3, we have 9E1 square root 2 over L sine 3 pi x over L. These two are now excited states as n uh, goes uh, beyond 1. And now we have uh, n equals 3, 2L over 3 for the wavelength. So that means we have 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes and 3 anti-nodes, etc. So these are the solutions and this is basically showing the energy levels here. The energy levels are energy is increasing on this scale. <clears throat> okay, the energy of the particle inside the well is purely kinetic energy. There is no potential energy because the potential energy is zero inside the uh, part, uh, inside the box. The number of nodes increases by one as n increases by one. Two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, as you can see here. Quantum mechanically, the particle cannot be at rest. E is equal to zero is not allowed as you can see, uh, and classically, E is equal to zero is allowed. The particle can be at rest. But quantum mechanical solution tells us that the lowest possible energy, ground state energy, is h square over 8 ml square, which is its kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of the particle inside this box cannot be zero. E is equal to zero is not allowed quantum mechanically. So to summarize, we have considered the particle in a box problem. The particle is confined to a box with infinite energy barriers. It's a square well with infinite energy barriers. Between 0 and L, the potential energy is 0. Outside is infinite. If we solve the Schrodinger's equation inside the box, we obtain the second derivative of Psi is minus 2me over h bar square Psi, which I called minus k square Psi, where k is square 2me over h bar. Now, writing the characteristic equation for this differential equation, m square plus k square equals 0, m equals plus or minus ik, the solutions are of the form a prime e to the ikx plus b prime e to the minus ikx, or with a different constant, a sine kx plus b cosine kx. Uh, the probability of finding the particle inside the walls must be 0. Psi of 0 is 0. That gives me b is equal to 0. So it's just a sine kx. And uh, the wave function must vanish at l as well. That gives me k is equal to n pi over l. Energy levels are 8 squared over 8 ml squared n squared. Energy is quantized. n starts from 1 is an integer. Cannot be 0 because the particle must exist. The wave function cannot be identically 0. And the corresponding wavelength, uh, because k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, is n pi over L. Lambda is 2L over M. The normalization condition from 0 to L integral probability density function dx equals 1 gives me a is equal to square root 2 over L. So I obtain the final solution. The wave function is square root 2 over L sine in pi x over L. Wavelength is 2L over N. Momentum is NH over 2L. Energy levels are h squared over 8 ml squared n squared and starts from 1 goes to infinity. Integer. So I, if I plot these solutions, I find that the number of nodes increases by 1 as n increases. Ground state energy, the lowest possible energy, is non-zero. And uh, the energy is purely kinetic energy here. Potential energy inside the box is zero. And according to classical mechanics, the lowest possible energy is zero. The particle can be at rest. Quantum mechanically, that's one big difference. The particle cannot be at rest.